popping, y'all. It's your boy, Staz, the Italian Stallion, a.k.a. ESPN Staz, because I'm bringing it to you like a highlight, you dig? We got a special, special guest on the show tonight, man, right here at AZ Way Too Active for another episode of The Definition of Active, you dig? Man, uh, in my opinion, this dude is one of the GOATs out of Arizona, man. One of the, uh, arguably one of the best basketball players to ever come out of the state. Um, you know, I think he's often overlooked compared to the other, you know, greats from the state. But, you know, if y'all do y'all research, y'all know and y'all will see that this dude is is really one of the GOATs uh, from Arizona. Um, he's the all-time leading scorer in Basketball Africa League history, a.k.a. the BAL. Um, a BAL all-first team selection and uh, 2022 BAL scoring champion. Uh, Terrell Stoglin is in the building. What's up, man? How you What's doing, up, brother? How you living, G? You, it's a pleasure. Always, always. You feel me? I think it's great for people to hear your story, and that's what I want to show tonight. For sure, you for feel sure. Me? So uh, I want to get started by, um, obviously, you coming up in Tucson, right? Yeah, Tucson, Arizona, man. That's home. That's, that's where home? I was born, brother. Yeah. What part of Tucson? Uh, South side, man. You know, South, South Tucson. Tucson. Yeah. So South... The south side of Tucson or South Tucson? Because I heard that's like a a separate city in itself, right? Man, it's a separate city. Uh, south side. South side of Tucson. South side, man. Okay. So just the south side of the city. For sure, you know, for sure. Yeah. That's what's up. How was it like coming up out there? Man, honestly, you know, it's just a blessing to get out of there. First mm -hmm. of all, I want to give honor to God who's head of my life. You know what no. I'm saying? Facts. Uh, center of my universe. You know, uh, Yahuwah, Jesus. You mm -hmm. know, Yahweh. Without them, I wouldn't be here. So I want to throw that out there. Um, when we talk about where I'm from, man, it's it's a little town, not too much there, not too much to do there, mm -hmm. you know. Um, either be an athlete or be a doctor. I chose to be an athlete. Mm -hmm. So the Lord blessed me where I was able to, you know, break some records and make some noise out of the small town mm -hmm. at a young age. You yeah. know what I mean? So I got blessed to get out of there and make something of it. No, man, much blessings, man, for sure, man, because a lot of people, you know, don't make it out yeah. there. You feel me? Yeah, just, man. <laughs> I lived in Tucson for a year, bro, and just uh, just seeing some of the people out there, just you know, mm. fall into the to the vices of mm -hmm. you know the streets and all that. Yeah, and tough. a lot of times it's good people, you yeah. know, it's smart people. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Tucson, man. Shout out to the South Side, though, man. There's a lot of good people in Tucson. Five twenty, five twenty. Uh huh. Yeah. Five two zero. Some of the best Mexican food out there. <laughs> yeah, I say the best on the West Coast, man. You yeah, know, that, that's I say that I say that boldly. You know, I used to stay out in LA, stay down in Cali. You know, uh -huh. I got people in Seattle. I checked it out, but nothing hits like uh, Tucson. Uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Facts, facts, mm -hmm. for sure, man. Good stuff, good stuff. So, um, when you was coming up, man, hooping the stuff like, um, who was you emulating your game after? Who was you looking up to? Who was you influenced by coming up in the hoop game? Man, I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, I took in a lot from. Allen Iverson, but it's hard to say emulate because I I really wasn't emulating anybody. It was more of just like looking at the passion that they have for the game. Mm -hmm. You know, I never really saw anyone that played like me other than Nick Van Exel. You know, Nick Ooh, Van Quick, okay. You know what I'm saying? Nick the lefty. Quick. Yeah. yeah, I never seen anybody with that like attitude. You know, he went out there with a chip on his shoulder. I like that. But um, I'm actually close friends now with. He's like a mentor to me now, Salim Stoudemire. Really? Yeah, that played at the U of A. Wow. That that was the first dude that I saw where I was like, okay, I want to play college basketball. I want to shoot like this guy right here. Yeah. And he's still shooting like that. So. Wow. Really? It's crazy. Still. Man. To this day, still shooting like that. Wow. Yeah. Salim Stoudemire, do your research, y'all. Yeah. Do your research. A great. You know what I mean? A yeah. great player from U of A. Mm -hmm. You feel me? That's what's up. That's what's up. Um. So. Santa Rita High School. Huh. That's where it started. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Um, how was that? How instrumental was that, uh, you know, in the, uh, in your career? Man, it was a blessing. Um, my family, they prayed on it. We didn't know where to go. You know, we were thinking about going to a powerhouse called Tucson High. Had a lot of Tucson good High. players. And even mm -hmm. uh, my boy Bryce Cotton that played pro now. Mm -hmm. He played there as well. So it was a lot of good names out there. Um, the first day of school, we were going to Tucson High, and my dad was just like, I had a dream. You need to come to Santa Rita. 
I was like, what you talking about? You had a dream. I don't want to, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was scared because, you know, um, I have both parents, and even though my environment was was tough and my family was tough, my parents sheltered me into like a church and basketball environment. So like when I got to Santa Rita, it was like a culture shock, like, oh, like dang, you know, it was the east side of Tucson. And mm-hmm. I wasn't, we had the first day I was there, we had a bomb threat. Wow. SWAT team came through, wow. you know, so it, it was just a lot. It was like five different fights in one day, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Wow. Looking back on it, those were like the great days of my life, you know what I'm saying? But at yeah. that time, I was I was scared, mm-hmm. you know? So yeah, Santa Rita, but um, like on the basketball side, it was a blessing to play for Jim Ferguson. Mm-hmm. You know, he was like a legend in the city, and he had been trying to get me since I was like in the sixth grade. Really? Yeah, and my parents thought he was crazy. It was like this, you know, this older white gentleman. Yeah. You know, <laughs> keeps showing up to your games. You know, who is, they knew who he was. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because he, uh, like, Santa Rita had a tradition of having, uh, like, great guards. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But none of them really made it, you know. It's either they stopped after high school or they, you know, was on the streets or whatever. Yeah. You know, but they were just, like, big-time names. So, I guess I was, like, the last to come through with him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And for those that don't know, and for those that are watching, Santa Rita is in what part of Tucson? Oh, the east side. That's the east side. Okay. Yeah, east side. Okay. The school about to shut down, though, so pray for Santa Rita. You know what I'm saying? Why, why, that. why that? I guess something about, like, money and, like, student-wise, like, people aren't going there no more and stuff like that. Like, dang. Some, some politics. Crazy. Well, it might be different now, but that's what I heard. Crazy, man. Shout you out know. to Santa Rita, man. Yeah. For real, though. Definitely. For real. Yeah. <clears throat> and by the way... Do your research as well. Public record, all obviously an all all conference player, all state mm-hmm. player, m- numerous accolades while playing at Santa Rita. Mm, blessing, you know I mean? straight Big blessing for sure. Um, so after Santa Rita High School, obviously you was getting recruited by lots of lots of schools. Yeah, um, I read somewhere that uh, uh, that you well, actually no, I'll take that back. Did you want to go to U of A? Yeah, it was complicated, though. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because this is when Lou Olsen stepped down. Yeah. And there was, like, three different coaches at that time. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? It was, like, Reggie Gary. Then it was, like, Kevin Punter, who coached for the Minnesota Timberwolves and ours. Uh-huh. And then they had uh, Coach Kevin O'Neill. It was, like, three different, you know, head coaches. So things was different. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but I definitely wanted to go there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. perfect world, yeah. Facts. And so you ended up picking University of Maryland. Yeah. And I read somewhere, this is what I want to get to. I read somewhere you said, I know nothing about University of Maryland, but Steve Francis uh, went there. Uh, yeah. Shout out to Steve Francis. You a great the franchise. Baby. Yeah, the franchise, baby. You know what I mean? Yeah, legend. Legend. You know, don't forget that franchise. Mm-hmm. You know? Hell yeah. Um, um, so what made you pick Maryland? Um, it was the sense of a family. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So um these guys were showing up to my math class. Really? Yeah. You know, showing up to my math class, making sure I'm on time. Showing up to my, my parents' house before I get there. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know they in town. They sitting in the living room with, with my mom and my dad eating dinner. Wow. You know, just things like that. Um, they show their dedication, showing up to my little brother's basketball games just to go. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, it was a family, bro. And then, you know, the legendary coach, uh, Gary Williams, Yes. He's amazing, bro, and he a dog. You know, like yeah. his mindset. You really? would never think that. You would never think that. Well, from the West Coast, you probably never think that. But on the East Coast, they know, like, he, mm-hmm. he go, you know. So. He seems so chill. Like, growing up out here, I always watched him. Like, he seemed just so cool <laughs> and chill on the bench, you know? Yeah, man. Um, He's very, um, he's very like, high energy. He has a lot of passion. It was an honor to play for him when I did. Honored to know him, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. To learn from him. And I was a knucklehead, so I was always in his office. He was Mm -hmm. always calling me in. Really? Yeah, (laughs) hollering at me and stuff. (laughs) You'd be surprised. A lot of players don't have a relationship with their coaches. Like, Mm -hmm. they don't know them. Like, they barely talk to them. You know what I'm saying? Like, once you're on the court, they coach you. But when you get off them that hardwood, you don't know this person. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. So I knew him, so it was cool. That's what's up. That's yeah. what's up. And, and y'all made the y'all made the tournament a couple times, right? Man, uh, right before I got there, they did. Okay. Yeah, and they lost by a last second shot. That was when they had a uh, Gravis Vasquez. Yeah, Vasquez. The Venezuelan guard. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I was there two years. We didn't make it. He okay. was going through it because he had left. Mm-hmm. He left my after my freshman year. So okay. we were like looking for a coach and different players. Everybody was leaving. Yeah. You know. 
that shit sucks when like somebody that's recruiting you and doing all this work and then they just leave. It's just kind of like what the hell, like yeah, you know? yeah. It's like a parent leaving their kid, kind of. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because this new coach comes in and you know he has a whole new set. But I I was blessed in the sense of like the new coach that came in, he uh, was recruiting me in high school. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, Mark Turge, and he was trying to get me. He gave me a scholarship to Texas A and M. Wow. Yeah. So like when he came, he's like, I got you. Mm -hmm. That's the first words he told me, and uh, it was cool. It was cool though. I had a great no. year though. Yeah, you, know, you was balling. I, I don't regret it. You was balling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah. My hell yeah. <laughs> For sure. Uh, I mean, obviously there's highlights, you know, on YouTube and whatnot. You playing in Maryland and whatnot. Y'all go check that out and whatnot. Do your research. Um, so after college, you know what I mean. Um, were there any NBA? tryouts, any sort of NBA aspirations, like, okay, let me do these steps, you know, let me talk to an agent, like, let me go to some combines or anything like that? Yeah, man, there there were steps to everything. So, like, um, when I left, I was the top scorer in the country, and I was an ACC leading scorer as a sophomore. So, like, when I got in trouble at Maryland and they, like, suspended me, I went into the draft, and when I got there, there's 30 teams in the league, I tried out for 24. You know, okay. So I had 24 workouts. And the one that stood out for me was the one where it was me and Dame Lillard. Like, we went to the Toronto Raptors. We tried out for, like, a day. And it was, like, four of us. Me, two Holloway, uh, Dame Lillard, two other people. I forget. Okay. And uh, they kept me and Dame. So we stayed for two weeks. And we trained with the team and everything. And this is when uh, Jared Bayless was there. Yeah. So Jared, I know him from Arizona. He yeah. Arizona great. Arizona. So, like, he, yeah, so he was, like, my big brother in that situation yeah. where, you know, I was staying in my little condo, but then most of my time was with him. Wow. In his pent, his pent, his penthouse. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that was dope. And then DeMar DeRozan, you know, I knew him from high school because we played against Compton. Mm -hmm. So he knew me. and um, So it was cool. Um, but that was the the highlight of the draft. And and I got to work out for a lottery pick. Um mm -hmm. I worked out for the New Orleans Hornets when Monty, uh, Monty, Coach Monty, Monty Williams, yeah, Monty him. Williams was there, yeah. Wow, and that was that's my dog. Uh, yeah. What's up, Coach? You know what I'm saying? I'm still available, baby. You know what I <laughs> mean? Facts. Facts. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, yeah, he was the coach there, and it was uh, me, Austin Rivers, uh, Jeremy Lamb, and Terrence Ross. It was for the lottery pick for the ten. Wow, you know, but there's a lot of politics in that. Mm -hmm. You know, with the league, mm -hmm. I want the money, but I don't want those problems. Mm -hmm. I was in there for a little bit. That was just wow. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. No, I bet. Yeah. We had uh, we had um, my homie uh, Jahi Carson on the show. <laughs> That's baby bro. Last year, Jahi, what's up, boy? Call me. Yeah, you know, facts. Yeah, he actually mentioned. Uh, he actually mentioned your name to me. He was like, "Yo, Terrell is one of the ones." Like, yeah, it's family. You know what I mean? yeah, yeah, it's family since we was uh, young. Yeah, yeah. Facts. <laughs> I grew up, I grew up playing with him like since 12 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, back in the um, Team AZ days. Team AZ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <All that>. man. <laughs> John, he was a crossover with the yeah, headband. Yeah, yeah. Bro, yeah. I forgot to mention it, bro. <laughs> we went to the Jordan camp in okay. Santa Barbara one year. Okay. And this is when Ann One was popping. Okay. And we was in a circle. Yeah. It was like it was like lunchtime or something. Right. In the dorms and whatnot. And he started like doing and one hot sauce stuff mm -hmm. and a whole crowd of people just gathered around, bro. Yeah. And he was in the middle of the crowd, just crossing people. It's funny. I'll be honest with you, man. He told me that story a long time ago and I didn't know how true it was. Really? So you just said wow. that right now. <laughs> I promise wow. you, dog. I wow. heard it. Yeah. Wow. He told me that. And and little <laughs> Romeo was there. Yeah. And he was cooking Romeo. Yeah, yeah. Master you know. P son. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah, those are good times, though, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, that's when Romeo was playing with D. Rosen. Yep, Compton Magic, uh, right? Compton Magic and P. Miller. Yeah, P. Miller, P. Miller All Stars. Yeah, 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 those are good times. Brandon Jennings was number one yeah. during that time. Yeah, yeah. BJ, Crazy. what's up, family? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Facts. Cool. Shout out to y'all, man, for sure. Yeah. Well, shit. All right then. So you was doing that, man, and then you know the BAL, man. What made you want to say, yo? Let me go to the BAL. Let me go to Africa. Man, I'm, I'm being real when I say y'all wait with me. You know, God is real. You know, I was going through a, a rough time in my life, and um, I didn't know which way my career was going to go because mm -hmm. my love for the game was going away. Uh -huh. You know, I was like, man, I'm done with this, you know? And then um, one of the teams in Morocco had hit me up. The money wasn't good, but, you know, sometimes you got to take 
you know, steps back to get forward. So I went, mm-hmm. took that job, and it just so happened it was playing in the BAL, mm-hmm. you know, and um, so I got to play in it for two years with them. The kicker of it was, like, the team that won the championship the first year was the actual team that I was playing with the year before. You know, I had some trouble with the management, and uh, so I was feeling some type of way. Mm-hmm. So the team from Morocco kind of, like, saved me. Mm-hmm. You know, they came in. Um, they did a lot for me. I did a lot for them, man. So it's all love to them. Mm-hmm. El Saleh, you know, from Morocco. Mm-hmm. So I played in that. And um, it was dope to play in it, man. You know, I got to set records in it in mm-hmm. only two years. That ain't been broke yet. And I got to break my own record. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it was like me versus me yeah. out there, at, you know. But the league is getting bigger, man. And I look forward to playing in it uh, in the future. Got you, got you. Yeah. And, that, and that actually leads me to my next question, like, what 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 is it like playing in the BAL Basketball Africa League? Once again, for y'all that don't know, the, it's one of the top leagues in the in the world, yo. You know, there's obviously the NBA, but BAL is a very uh, big and uh, you know well known league. You know, mm-hmm. in the world, and it's very competitive, mm-hmm. very competitive. I would say hundreds, uh, thousands, and thousands of fans pack the stadium. Yeah, for the yeah. games. <laughs> um, but anyway, oh. Uh, what's it like playing in the BAL? Like, what's the competition like? You know, like, how does that compare to, like, other leagues, you know, the NBA? And, like, you know, kind of explain that a little bit. Yeah, the BAL, it's it's a it's a tough league um, because you're playing against, uh, I mean, I just straight up say it, strong Africans, bro. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, them brothers built different. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They're wiry. They're tall. They're lanky. But they're strong, real mm-hmm. strong. And they're fast. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So... Um, for me to like dominate that for two years in a row, I mean, it was just a testimony to my worth at, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, you know, I had them days where I'll just sit back and watch the games like, oh, dang, that's me. Like, I'm out there hooping, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I do that. And then, um, but it's a new league, so it's only been out for three years. So a lot of people haven't heard of it yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but how it compares to other leagues, um, it has a long ways to go because, you know, I played in Greece, and Greece was probably one of the toughest leagues I've ever played in. Mm-hmm. The IQ of the Greeks, yeah, the strength of them. Wow, man, dog! I, that's when I knew I was in a, a grown man's game. Really, and they don't call fouls like they do here in the states. You know, ticky really? tack fouls and stuff. Mm-hmm. Nah, man. You know, it, it reminds you of like '90s, '80s basketball. Mm-hmm. You know, can't get to the basket. You got to go hit the weight room. Mm-hmm. You know, and you better eat. Finish your meal, you know. Ain't none of this skinny. Have the you pita know? bread. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have the have the uh, the gyros. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep, for Jeez. real. And I was addicted to those too. Some yeah. hot sauce. They fire out. Killing there. them, bro. Yeah. They fire out. There. Yeah, man. <laughs> That's hard. That's hard. Yeah, I, I want to go to Greece sometime in my life. Man. Yeah, go to Athens and Cyprus next. After that, Athens. Thank and me Cyprus? after. Yeah, okay. thank me after, brother. <laughs> Was a. Uh, I mean, did, did, you didn't run into Giannis at all out there, did you? Uh, I actually did. Uh, I played against him and his, and his little brother. You did? Yeah, and they came to a couple of our practices. Wow. Yeah, because uh, the Damn. city the city I lived in was Zugrafu. Okay. That's the name of it. Mm-hmm. And it was right by Zeus's uh, temple. Wow. And his family, it's like a hood, though. And his family lived around the corner. Mm-hmm. So they came and they, uh, they practiced with us one time. And then him and his brother played in the All-Star game with all of us. Okay. Because he was going into the draft. So they put him in the, the All-Star game with us pros. Damn. Yeah, so it was cool. I that's see him. Cool. He won an NBA MVP, man. Congrats, fam. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. That's what's yeah. up. Good dude. Yeah. Good dude. From what I've seen. Good family. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's what's up. For sure, man. So, you know, speaking of accolades and MVPs, man, like I said at the beginning of the show, um, <clears throat> so you set, uh, you know, you set the record for most points in a BAL game. Mm-hmm. Um, with 40 points, mm-hmm. and then uh, you scored, and then you topped that, I think, the year after, right? Or maybe yeah. the same year. The Not year, a year after. after. year after, mm-hmm. with the most points ever scored in the game, mm-hmm. which is 41 points. 41. Mm-hmm. Um, so you have that. Obviously, you, you were the scoring champion last year mm-hmm. for the league. And then, uh, you know, you have, obviously have, you know, the all-time – you know, the all-time record. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a blessing. Um, sure. How does that make you feel? Man, it feel good. You know, would have felt better with a championship. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. It feel good, though. Um, It really feel good to, like, I ain't going to say conquer Africa, but, like, you know, my first two years in Africa was in Egypt, 
you know, and that was rough. And I won a championship out there. And then the next two years after that was in Morocco. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, playing in the BAL, you playing in, like, Rwanda, Senegal. Um, so, like, it felt good to, like, know that I was killing in these places. That's, like, home. Yeah. You know, and and not just that, just to learn. Like, I, I don't grow my locks because it's a style. I grow my locks because it's my strength. It's my yeah. serenity, you know, and I mm -hmm. learned who I was in these places. You know, I have a certain type of, like, understanding of self mm -hmm. since I've been in Africa. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. So it's cool. You know, it's cool. That was dope. That was dope. Yeah. And you plan on you plan on going back, correct? Man. Yeah. Well, yeah. And especially, like, I have family and friends out there now. Okay. Relationships now. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? A lot. So um, I want to go out there, but more, like, for vacation. Yeah. You know, I want to start going to different places where I can get paid in a, in a certain way where I'm okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Gotcha. And it's not like that over there right now. Mm -hmm. Except for in Egypt. Egypt paying. Egypt uh, paying? Shout out to Egypt. Hey. Yeah. I'm still free, yo. No, I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. Yeah. And shit, yeah, I mean, you said it. You won a championship in Egypt. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. how was how was that? Like, was the league, was that a competitive league too? <sighs> man, be real, man. I went through so much. Uh, I went through so much on and off the court. You know what I'm saying? Going mm -hmm. to a, a team that hadn't won a championship in 12 years. Um. Egypt's not an easy place to live, you know? It's cheap, mm -hmm. but it's not a brochure, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's the hood, it's the slums, like, for real. Yeah. So, like, my everyday living was, like, put to the side. I had to humble myself. A lot of Muslims out there, so I was learning how to, like, um, put down uh, pleasures mm -hmm. and focus on things. So I was, like, doing a lot of time in the room, just yeah. in the room and just reading and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um. And it was tough. Like, I was dealing with, like, a divorce at that time. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And mm -hmm. it was tough, bro. And just to win the championship that year, it was, like, more of, like, this is my family. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They were my brothers, mm -hmm. you know, because we all were going through stuff at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, that, that joint emotional, bro. That, mm -hmm. was, that was tough. Yeah, that was a tough year. Yeah, facts. Yep. But shit, it made you, it made you stronger, bro. And yeah, look, what, look, look where, you, where you at now, you know what I mean? Yeah, man. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, for sure. That's just what's up. That's uh -huh. super dope, man. Um, so you know, obviously, y'all, you know what I mean. Uh, go do your research once again. Uh, check out the highlights on YouTube. You know, um, shit, catch a game. You know, um, catch a BAL game mm -hmm. if y'all can. Um, and you know, check him out on Instagram, and, and see all the stuff that he's been doing. You know, in the BAL, it's it's pretty incredible, y'all. Um, so, uh, I want to move on to some national news that you were a part of a couple years ago. Um, yeah. J. Cole, mm -hmm. um, went to play in the BAL, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. And you spoke out about, you know, obviously the attention that, you know, it was causing, you know, and you made some comments about that and received some backlash. Yeah. You feel me? You yeah. know, I mean, ESPN, you talked to ESPN. This was, you know, Shade Room Sports was 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 posting it. Mm -hmm. You know, it was it was a national, you know, news headline. You know, talk about that experience, man, and you know how that went down for you. Yeah, um so like the, there's always a root to the situation. So the root of it was um this dude was uh he he a celebrity you know he famous he a celebrity and he mm -hmm. came in and we, we're hoopers we're we're not um fans once you're on the court like you know can you hoop mm -hmm. and he wasn't and it was it was no disrespect towards him it's just you're not hooping and you know and we have found out that a lot of politics was in it where like the starting point guard for the team had been cut this is a guy who you know, played with that team for 10 years, mm -hmm. blood, sweat, and tears. You yeah. cut him for just for a publicity stunt. Mm -hmm. It'd be fine if he hooping, but he not hooping, you know? So um, a lot of people don't know. Like, I saw Cole, like, the day before that. We was all in the cafeteria, and uh, I was going upstairs, and he was coming downstairs, and I just straight told him, like, yo, you know you taking up a spot for for a dude that really deserved this, you know what I'm saying? Because I was one of those dudes that was just working out and looking for a job opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not on albums. You know, I'm I'm out here hooping for my living, you know? Mm -hmm. He knew. He just smiled at me, dapped me up, you know, just laughed, you know. And that was it. And so the next day, I went to lunch, and um, I had an interview with ESPN. Um, I had forgot. I had an interview, and I was just talking just normal to the guys, if we're just talking like friends. Yeah. 
Um, and so he printed it like reporters do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you got national news. I didn't know until like um, people were telling me like, oh, the Breakfast Club, uh, Angela Yee uh, posted about you, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, Rick Ross, he uh, had a video addressing what you said. And I was like, what did I say? You mm -hmm. know, and then the people pulled up on Twitter because I ain't got Twitter. Mm -hmm. And it was all over Twitter. And I was like, oh, dang, that's wild, but that's dope. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, that's wild, but that's <laughs> yeah, dope. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Every publicity is good publicity, shoot. Mm -hmm. As long as people know I'm honest and I'm speaking for the ones who are voiceless. Mm -hmm. You know, I had brothers back home that was working out every day and they had the opportunity and they deserved it, mm -hmm. you know? So, no facts. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, uh, well, we were talking off camera. So you said you, you spoke to him too. Afterwards, right? Yeah, before. Before. Before, okay. yeah. And I tried to speak to him afterwards. Um, um, his agent had hit uh my agent and said that they didn't want me to talk uh to him or to speak about him anymore, like to the media. Wow. And asked they just asked it politely, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. My agent hit me like, Oh, I got a call from da 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 da. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was like, Well, tell them that I want to talk to him face to face to let them know that it's nothing personal. Mm -hmm. You know, I talked to you before I said it to the public. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to talk to him, but I didn't get to. And then, like, um, I was doing an interview, and he was coming downstairs, and he saw me. He had his backpack on. And he went right back upstairs. And I was Damn. like, oh, dang. Then the next day, he left. Yeah. He left the BAL the next day. He no longer he didn't in stay. the league. Nah, he left the next day. Wow. So it was wild. Wow. Mm -hmm. But for the record, dude, it's all love with him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I ain't got no... Uh, no animosity to him. I like his. I like his music. He actually raps about something that makes sense. Mm -hmm. No facts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm all about what's real. You know, you yeah. speaking real. It's all love for me. Mm -hmm. I used to listen to Dreamville. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. Talk about who dreams. You know, mm -hmm. what I mean? you know. I'm with it. We had a basketball. It was yeah. holding that shit to cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 It's love. Yeah, facts. You know what I mean? Shout out J. Cole, you know what I mean? Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully this can catch catch the attention, but you know, it's all good. All love. You know all what I mean? All love for sure. Well, for sure, man. Uh, you know, we're gonna wrap it up pretty soon, man. But um, you know, you mentioned to me that uh, you know, you were out here uh working out for the big three. Yeah, yeah, man. What's going um, on with that? Yeah, unfortunately it didn't work in my favor. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of politics with that. But as you know, you know, the big three is only for those who played in the NBA, uh -huh. you know, have NBA championships, NBA All-Stars, mm -hmm. vets, you know. So um, for them to invite me, it was a blessing. Yeah. You know, so I was honored. I was down here just working out for it. And, mm -hmm. and I believe if they would have had the combine, which they canceled, if they mm -hmm. had that, you know, maybe things would have been different. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. but um, good people talked about me. Michael Cooper, he a legend. Wow. Yeah, he actually wow. asked for me. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got invited. Wow. And, um, you know, Mike Beasley, he chopped in. And that's my big dog, Mike Beasley. Mike Beasley. Yeah, man. so it was cool just to know that people at least got my name in their mouth mm -hmm. that are higher up. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. That's Hell love. Yeah. And for y'all that don't know, the big three is Ice Cube's league that he started. Mm -hmm. And that's obviously been around and, you know, very competitive. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm never saying that. I want to play in that joint. Hey, I ain't never. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you played last year. I want to play. Hell yeah. You Hell know? yeah. For we'll sure. see in the future, though. Hell yeah. Mm. So, uh, so Terrell, man, why do you think that, why do you think you have the kind of an overlooked status out here compared to the other big, big name, you know, players that have come from Arizona? Man, I'll be honest with you. Um, I've embraced it. I don't. I can't say that I don't think about it. Sometimes I feel like, man, if this was anybody else, if they had these accolades, if they broke these records, everyone would know about it. Yeah. Every time they they have a little forty point game, it's going crazy. Mm -hmm. I average thirty everywhere I go. You 30. don't really hear it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. even in the BAL, I average thirty two years in a row. You know what yeah. I mean? And like it's like you don't hear about. It. And then the Arizona records, you know, number three right behind Mike Bibby, and mm -hmm. you know. You know, I don't think too much about it, um, but the people show respect. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing. I feel like the people's champ. You know, like, I get a lot of love, man, for it, mm -hmm. you know, because people see that I am overlooked and they like the humbleness. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's coming mm -hmm. with that killer at the same time. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I, I like it. I enjoy it. Um, so, yeah. You know, I can't really think too much about it. No, facts. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and it's, it's, uh, the crazy thing is, man, you you 6'1". Yeah. 6'1", and you you dominating. Yeah. 6'1". 6'1 is, is, is small in basketball 
term. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? That's crazy. I feel like this, I'll be the smallest one on the court, bro. Yeah. And uh, I don't feel it until I watch the game. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I feel bigger than them. Yeah. It's crazy. I don't know that yeah. how I get that feeling, but I do. But then when I watch the game, I'm like, oh, I'm little. Oh, I'm quick. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, that's what's up. That, you know. Yeah. I'll get in there. I'll but you out here doing, you, you out here doing step back, turn around, spin, <laughs> spin moves in, in the face of these motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Fade away shots from three. Thank you, brother. In, yeah. the, in the grill. You feel me? Yeah. And um, I always tell people, like, it's art. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Enjoy it. Have a different mindset. Get out there. You remember all the techniques that you was taught since you was a kid and then put your own spin on it. Go do mm-hmm. your thing. Can't nobody tell you mm-hmm. what to do if you're making it. Facts. I shoot with one hand, one leg. If I'm making it, you <laughs> yeah. can't tell me nothing. You know uh-huh. what I'm saying? So I, I always tell young young fellas that type of stuff like that. Keep mm-hmm. it art. It's your art. Hell yeah. For sure. Facts. For sure. You know what I mean? And speaking of that, man, we about to wrap it up, man. One last thing, man. You know, what, what can you say to the to the youth coming up out here in Arizona playing basketball that that want to make it to the level you made it to or who want to make it to the NBA or make it to the highest level possible playing basketball? Yeah, man. I mean, just to keep it 100 grand, you know, stick to yourself. Don't worry about pleasing the crowd. Don't worry about what the media says. Try not to read the media about you if you play basketball. Don't read what the media says about you. Um, try to keep your friends very small friends that you grew up with from a young age and that your parents like or the people around you that love you like um, and just have fun with it. If you ain't having fun with it, you ain't going to get to that high level, man, because the higher you go, um, the more corrupt it is and it takes away from the love of the game. Mm-hmm. Trust me, take my word for it. You know what I'm saying? Been pro for 11 years, bro, since I was 19, mm-hmm. you know, and man, this this industry will take away from that love, you know, mm-hmm. unless you truly love it. Yeah. If you don't love it, put it down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's my advice. You don't mm-hmm. love it, put it down. Yeah, and I, I heard there's even NBA players that don't really, you know what I mean? Yeah. They just in there. Yeah, they, they don't love the game. They like what it provides. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And and then it, it's deeper, though, because anything that's a business or industry is, is corrupt. Mm-hmm. You know, like just normal day living, you're dealing with corrupt in business. Mm-hmm. So if you're dealing with like athletes who are like idolized by people, just mm-hmm. imagine how corrupt that joint is. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like who's really the best or is these just the people that you put out there for us to select? Yeah. You know, same with the presidents. The same stuff. Government. You know, it's all, all, all mm-hmm. the same. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Mm-hmm. Well, for sure, man. Uh, Once again, it's your boy Staz, the Italian stallion. You feel me? AKA ESPN Stas, because I'm always bringing it to you like a highlight, man. Um, let them know where they can find you. Social man, media. Man, T Stoglin, T Stoglin, 12 on IG, and that's it. I ain't got no social media. Y'all can find me on the internet, though. Much love. God bless y'all. Keep God first, and uh, peace and love. Yes, sir, man. Uh, make sure to tune into his Instagram for all the updates on his uh, future hoop endeavors. Uh, we got Terrell Stoglin once again, man. Uh, it was a pleasure having you. Thanks, you know man. Yes, sir. Um, it's your boy Staz, man. Is AZ way too active? The definition of active, and we out. Mm-hmm.